This is an excerpt from A Dream and a Monster at the End of It by Nadia Vulcan. The Rumina landed on Elijah with a bump and a scrape, and the certain satisfaction of its arrival having been foretold. The Solar Ring's best scientists had all agreed. On Elijah's last sail through the neighborhood, it had come closest to Sarai. It was only fair that Sarai would be the first to land on it, the first to drill it, the first and only to mine its riches. The prodigal planet, a stranger from afar, Sarai had eagerly waited its return for a thousand years, committed to its songs and films and cigarette brands and about a hundred of their eldest son's names in this year of its perihelion. Across the solar ring, so had everyone else. Three dozen refugee communities were waiting with desperate colonization requests that the ICG would never read. Taro was waiting to capture Elijah with an arsenal of illegal push beams, even though Elijah wasn't theirs to claim by any standard of interstellar law. Everyone else was waiting with telescopes because Elijah was just that beautiful coming into habitable space like a chariot of, not a fire, but ice. The only one not waiting a second longer was Sarai, because fortune favored the brave in this interplanetary age. Captain Caden brought out the bottle of wine that he'd smuggled on board and promised that they would open it after their first, made first break. We're going to drink it all, he told his crew. Then we're going to stuff the bottle with a note that says go fuck yourself, and we're going to throw it out the airlock and hope it hits Terra. With any luck, they'll think it's a message from the great-great-granddaddies. The crew laughed. It was easy to laugh at that overgrown planet that thought everything was theirs. Easy to laugh at all callers, perched on the edge of a cliff and yelling nonsense at the abyss, so convinced that out there was humanity's true home. Some great empire that had lost track of one of their outposts, but out there had become in here, and through all the cracked mud and subterranean lakes and water vapor, there was no one yelling back. They were alone. They were alone. They were alone. They were alone. Praise God, they were alone. Xenia is a caller too, you know, said Arik slyly. 